Hi guys, Jenny here again. Now, we all know how important it is to keep our WAF points in the positive figures. I'm no exception to this. And of course, we all get those moments where things don't work and our other half not really happy about it. So when my wife said to me, can I have a smart switch at the side of the bed so I can turn everything downstairs off when I go to bed, I said yes. So I looked at smart switches. There's quite a few to choose from. Some of them are better than others. But I know my other half. She's not your regular kind of woman. And she likes military missile launch style switches. So when she said, can you use a fancy switch with a latch in it? I said yes. And this is what I've come up with. And so this sits at the side of her bed and she can fire off whichever button she needs. I'll show you how I did this and how we make it control anything thanks to Home Assistant. Okay, first thing to do is to pick up a few essential supplies. So we got some D1 minis, fantastic for little uh, projects like this. And I also picked up a set of switches. I picked these up from Amazon, so I'll put the links to these down below. Next, it was a job to assemble them. We're going to need a case to put them in. So I decided to fire up my 3D printer and print something off. Now, I figured it would just be a little simple box with a sloped top and we'd be good. So I designed a little case with the holes already moulded into it and a little space to hold the D1 Mini. The next thing was to install the switches into the case and wire them up. Now, all of the switches connect between ground and a GPIO pin because we have to use an input pull-up on this board. We can use an input and pull-down resistor, but I didn't want to add any extra components. So if we're using an input pull-up, these switches with their LED on the end of the stem will only light up if I connect the light side to the plus 5 volts, which means that they are illuminated when they're turned off instead of when they're turned on. And the good thing about this is it makes them easy to find in the dark. Okay, the next thing to do is to create the sketch that will run on the D1 mini board. So I've done this in ESP Home. And I've got the add-on running in my Home Assistant. So here it is. I've called it Joe's Control Panel. It's an ESP8266 on a D1 mini board. I've given it my Wi-Fi information and I'm using a manual IP address assignment. I've enabled the logger, API so that it will communicate directly with Home Assistant and OTA so that I can do over the air updates. Then for each of the switches, I've got a GPIO binary sensor. So the green switch is on pin D1. It's in input pull-up mode and it's inverted because that was the way that it worked out. The filters delayed on and delayed off just debounce the switch. So there's one of those for each of the switches in the case. I've also added my standard Wi-Fi signal sensor and the uptime sensor. I always include these. Okay, the next thing to do in Home Assistant is to compile the sketch. And when that's done, we can choose download the binary. We can then plug the control panel into the PC bring up the ESP Home Flasher, select the COM port 
and that firmware that we've just downloaded and press flash ESP. Okay, over in Home Assistant, we can now get it pulled in. We need to go to the integrations page. If it's been discovered, it should show up here. If not, we can add it as a new integration. It's an ESP Home integration, and we tell it the IP address. And it found it. And we can tell it that it is in the bedroom. And there we go. If we scroll down the list somewhere, and there it is. And we can see that it's running. And if I bring this here, if I do the purple, the blue switches at the top, so you can see that it's on and it's off. Excellent. Next thing we need to do is create some automations. Now I've gone ahead and done these already, so I'll switch over to that page and show you what I've come up with. Okay, in the automations editor in Home Assistant's config page, I've created an automation called Joe's Green Switch. The triggers are when the state of the green switch goes to on. I haven't got any conditions in this one. And the actions are exactly what she asked for. Call the service, home assistant, turn off the group the downstairs lights, the landing light, the immersion heater, the bath mode switch, and various other things. So now she can pick up her control panel. Well, she doesn't need to pick it up, she can leave it where it is. Flip the catch and fire that automation. And I'd better put the lights back on. So that's pretty good. I've got various other automations I've created for various different lights. And uh, she can use them to her heart's content. Okay, what's really great about this is that you can use whatever switches you like. You can use push buttons, toggle switches, you can use automations to control what happens when you turn them on, when you turn them off. It's entirely up to you. You do whatever you like and you can control anything with this. As long as you're using Home Assistant. The only downside is it has to be plugged in. It needs a power source. But since this is at the side of the bed, it's right by the socket. Now I'll post a link to the STL files for the case in case you want to print it yourself. I'll also put the links for the switches and the D1 minis on Amazon. So you can give this a go or something similar and let me know what you do for your own smart switches. For me this was a good little project, a good bit of fun, didn't take very long, was quite straightforward. And not only that, I've got a happier wife as a result. So in my mind, that's a two thumbs up. See you soon, guys. Hi, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below and the bell so that you get notified when I post new videos. Also, if you'd like to support my channel, you can check out my Patreon or Buy Me A Coffee pages. And in any case, remember to hit the thumbs up. Till next time guys, see you soon.